Hey guys, Fishy Baker here. It is the first day of summer. I've got the kayak all loaded up on my car here. I'm gonna go to a little lake today. It is the middle of May right now. Like I said, first day of summer. We've had a couple of warm week stretches here where these bass should be pushed up, maybe on beds. We'll see what we can get ourselves into today, but stay tuned, it should be a great episode. All right guys, we are launching the kayak here. It's gonna be the first bait we start out with. This is a great springtime to early summer bait. And that is a little popper right there. You can throw that in a little bit cooler water temps than some of these other top water baits and still get really aggressive blow ups. I'm just gonna keep that in the spinning rod for now. Um, keep it a little bit simple. I am going to cruise around these shorelines. You can see there's kind of reeds all around this place and so i'm just going to kind of be casting in and out of all those reeds to see what i can make happen first cast it's actually a bluegill on the popper not a bad one either Well, there's fish number one, beautiful bluegill. Not really what I was expecting. The great thing about a popper and why it works in this somewhat colder water than what you would normally be wanting to throw top water in, like middle of summer throwing a frog or something, is because of how it, you can get a lot of action out of it, but basically keep it in place. I can make a good bubble with this popper, but not actually have to move it at all. And being able to pause it right on the spot on top of where a fish is, a lot of times is what'll get you to strike. First green one of the day, right there. A lot of times when you get rain the night before, like we had last night, a lot of these bass will push way back into these reeds, which is not why not only I have a popper, but I do have a jig with me tied on right now so I can flip back in there a little bit easier. three or four of them looking at it. Oh, there's another one, a little chunky guy. XL Muscleback Raw. I was using watermelon red, but I just ran out, so we're gonna switch to brown and blue here. Um, put the blue side up. These claws float, which are really awesome because this time of year, like what we're experiencing, these fish are a little bit slower than I originally thought they were going to be. So I can, I can really just sit this jig on the ground and still get action out of it. And it's kind of like that, that popper. I don't really have to move it far in order to get really good action out of this bait. I can keep it sitting still and those, those claws are still going to be floating around right in the fish's face. Guys, there is a big bass right in front of me right now. It's a big one. That is a really big bass.
Well, guys, I'm still working on this big, on this big bass. He's not quite locked on the bed. Like when I pitch near him, he goes off of it, but then he comes right back. I don't know if I'll be able to get him to eat or not. I think this is a male. I just saw another fish that like started to come in and then he pulled off. I assume that's the female. He literally ate it. He had the he had the claw. Oh, we're gonna get this fish to go. I think he he just like disappeared from the bed for like a minute, but he was swimming super fast. I think he was chasing a bluegill off, and he got him really kicked off. And that was the next pitch in there when he got back, and boom, he ate it instantly. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm literally like I've got the kayak position like in this tree right now. Because originally when I pulled up, he would. He would not stay on if he could see me. So I'm, I'm hiding myself in this tree right now. So I can get a little bit of an advantage. It's starting to bug him, for sure. He's, he's nose down on it every time now. Oh, oh, I thought he had it. I thought he ate it. I like slightly bumped him. And he turned on a dime and I saw his mouth open up. I thought he ate it. I don't know if he missed it or if I missed him. Oh, he loves it. I'm bringing, he, he's like in this tree. Okay, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to describe this to you guys. He is like in this tree and he's sitting right below it. Like the tree is here, he's sitting right below it. So when I bring it over the branches of the tree and I can kind of drop it right down onto his face. It really is like a perfect pitch in order to get him to go. Gosh, it's a good one. I got him. I got him. Wow, this is, this is a big, strong fish. Holy cow, this is a big one. Whoo, he's stripping drag. Oh my gosh, this is a tank. Oh, come here, 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 come here. I got him. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Look at that right there. <laughs> Look at the size of that bass. Oh, I had to work for him. But look, right there, red and black bitsy bug with that X-Zone trailer hanging in his mouth right there. Those floating claws really do make a difference. Oh my gosh. Oh, we had to work for that one, guys. Oh my gosh, that's a freaking pig. That is a pig. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna get, I've got a, I'm gonna get a length and a, a weight on him real quick. Dump the bump board in the water. Holy crap. That's a nice fish. 19 inches. Four. Four. What is it bouncing between? Four, six. A little over four and a quarter. Oh my gosh, guys, look at the size of that bass right there. Honestly, it might be a male. It really might be a giant male, but I'm not sure. If it is, this is the most incredible male I've just about ever seen. We are back to this fish's bed right now. Here is this big 
spawning bass. Woo. Worked a while for this one. Had to literally sit in that tree, but we finally got her to go. There she goes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Set up here, Shimano Scorpion, DC reel in the 100 series. This is a Tecna PX seven foot, medium heavy fast action rod from Fenwick. I've got 20 pound braid on here connected to a 20 pound fluoro leader. I've got about a seven foot leader there. And what did the damage was this red and black bitsy bug, like I said. I ran out of the watermelon trailers, so I have this brown and blue flake on here. The other side's brown, this is blue. With the floating claws from none other than X-Zone Lures. Holy cow, what an awesome fish. Is it closed? See that little wake right there? That was him. Oh jeez. He's swimming around. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get this fish here. He's like, pick, every time he's on the bed and I'm pitching in there, he's picking it up. Say less. I'm gonna get him. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go. On Fishy Baker. Got Canada again. Let's get over here. Dude, you got another angle for your freaking video, dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, that is actually huge. Oh, uh, there it is in his mouth right there. Oh my, my god. god. What are you naming this one? Betty. Betty? Big Betty. Betty Boop. Look at the size of that mass. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my. <laughs> what is it? Four and three quarters. Nice. Four pounds, 12 ounces. What do you have to say about this? Well, right at the end of the day, I noticed that one come up here. And I'm glad I stuck it out. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Super fun to get out there right at the beginning of the year. Be able to catch a couple of big bass just like that. Um, have one more video of more fishing like that of Nathan, Zach, and I out in the boat catching some good spawning bass. And then this coming week, I leave for a Canada trip, so it's going to be a lot of episodes with that. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you all later.